Hello there, everybody. Savannah 92 AK Nightmare, and we are back to Rose Guns Day. So, where do I even begin right now? <sighs> Richard's plan to off Meiju and the young lord Sun Chi Long is now going off, and he's even willing to the point where he's willing to sacrifice the wild dogs. Granted, it was Maurice that set them up to be used as sacrificial dogs, specifically Oliver of all people. Like, my god, man! I'm sorry, I am just unbelievably upset right now, but do I hate Richard? No. It really goes to show how much of an effective villain that Gabriel is. He turned, he, he put Richard down a horrifically dark path where he's willing to sacrifice anyone just to get revenge for something that Meiju didn't even do. It's so horrifically fucked up. And right now, it looks like Alan himself is going to be jumping right into the, the fray and... Oh... God, it's terrifying me. It's... It's... It, it, it honest to God, just scares the fuck out of me what's going to happen. All I know is that Alan is... He might be able to make it in time, but I don't know. I want to believe in Oliver's skill. I really do. But God damn, I'm really fucking scared for his safety right now. Alan, explain it to me. I don't have a clue what's going on. Our concilier supposedly called out your bosses to establish friendly relations with the GDS, right? It's the exact opposite. This is a trap. They're planning to call out Major Son and this young Lord guy and finish them both off. How can you know that? Keith is a sniper. If he's been given a big job, it's got to be sniping. Well, of course. He lost a little sister in Yuji, the boy he adored as much as if he were his own child. For him to overcome that sadness, regain his calm, and try to strike up friendly relations? It's just too good to be true! The city is full of false rumors claiming the GDS was behind that incident. When humans have fissures running through their hearts, they have the bad habit of trying to fill them with whatever it is at hand. What would normally be a stupid conspiracy plot can become unconditional truth to a person whose heart has been wounded. There's no way the GDS was responsible. The concilier is wrong. At this rate, at this rate, a huge feud will break out. Madness doesn't always form a crimson flame that spits out fiercely. Just as it had, just as it had been in Gabriel's case, it sometimes burns quietly with a small blue flame. But blue flames are much hotter than red flames. I mean, I learned that from my era of academia. That sort of madness, which is hidden while it seems peaceful, is much more terrifying. So much so that even Cyrus, a childhood friend, had mistaken it. Right now, Richard may have appeared to be acting calm, but that wasn't true. He was a demon, possessed by the same quiet madness of revenge as Gabriel. The first target would certainly be Sun Shi Long, the young lord. But there was no way Keith would miss the second to prey beyond his scope. His second target would certainly be Li Meiju. Uh, are you saying brother will be shot? Might as well be hanged for a sheep as a lamb. There's no reason why they'd shoot the young lord, but let Meiju san go. Brother was going to meet the young lord in City 22 before departing. We might just be able to make it from here. Uh, don't bite your tongue. shortly. Hmm. It seems he ran into no problems on the road. Excellent. Richard's car will probably arrive soon, too. We're reaching the crucial moment. Ah! Boss! Look at that! What now? Enough of that pathetic screaming. Ah! Ah! Cyrus's group was meeting Richard. It was without a doubt Concilier Richard. His car wasn't here yet. Had he walked? Ridiculous, when did he get here? The men of the GDS can only look on with bewildered expressions. <laughs> They'll be arriving any time now. I wish I could say a thing or two to them. But we must keep up the act until the moment of their deaths. You'll get to see the instant of your revenge happen right in front of you. Don't hope for anything more. Hmm. 
true. In any way, the purpose of this plan is not revenge or satisfying my own personal emotions. Bullshit. It will be a clear answer to the GDS conspiracy, and a signal flare for the counterattack. For a count on you, Keith. He glanced at the roof of a building 300 meters away. He couldn't even really tell which building it was from this far away. However, Keith clearly saw Cyrus's glance through his scope. Hm. That's no good, Grand Boss. They'll spot me if you act like that. <laughs> Come, son she long. And we made you. I'll give you the same pain you gave Stella. And I'll avenge you, Jikun. And Alan. The procession carrying the concilier's body double quietly raced down the highway. <sighs> We're being followed, aren't we? Yeah. There's probably two or so cars following our group. Stop at the next signal. We'll tangle with them there. You got it. Oliver's car was the last one in the line. He had chosen to earn an achievement by preventing the enemy from attacking, rather than fighting off an enemy attack. Oliver had calmly observed his surroundings, noticing the cars that had pursued them over several blocks before anyone else. The two pursuing cars each had four formidable-looking men in them. It was so obvious he almost grinned. Of course, they could just be formidable-looking common folk. Let's be courteous. Sure, courteous. <laughs> oh, boy. Boss, everything's ready. Sorry I'm late. Is it just about time? The procession's one block away from the attack point. Body Double's procession had taken a slight detour to defend against enemy ambushes, but since Maurice had decided on that route himself, it meant nothing. Those are Wayne's prized wolves. They're apparently proud of the noses. You must make absolutely sure they don't realize it's us. Yes, boss. Well, no matter how hard you guys try, it'll probably be obvious. Those brats have good instincts when you at least expect it. <laughs> In that case, we can't help some of them figuring it out. So in exchange, make sure none of them leaves alive. Fuck you! Damn it! Sorry, I'm, I'm getting very fucking upset right now. <laughs> Sun Chi Long's car entered the street containing the Long Gao. The barricade of cars was moved out of the way, allowing only Zhi Long's car through. The two men of the GDS stood up straight, fully tense. They've arrived. They're here. Li Meiju, Sun Shi Long. We'll make you pay for your sins right here. <laughs> what? It's Richard. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Something's not right about this. Hmm. I agree. I'm honored he came to meet us, but it's careless of him to stand in the middle of the street. Again, slight psychic thing about here, just kind of trying to figure out what she's saying. We're happy for the sentiment, but politely decline. Yes, boss. Only the big guard got out of the car. Looks like they're cautious after all. So they don't want a handshake here? Which means they are no fools either. What'll we do? There is no problem. With Keith's skill, the distance from the car to the restaurant is more than enough. Concilia! We're truly grateful that you came to greet us directly. I meant it as a sign of respect to Mr. Shi Long. But does he not wish to accept a handshake? Not at all. A leader will gladly shake your hand. But who knows what might happen in the middle of the road with such a good view? For the sake of your safety as well, please allow them to greet you inside the restaurant. <laughs> no helping it, huh? Understood. Then we will meet inside. So, 
You shamelessly show such caution now, Sun Chief Lord. <laughs> okay, come out. Keep. It's finally time to let them feel Stella's pain. First, Lee Meiju got out of the car. He was surrounded by guards just in case of snipers, but that wasn't enough to stop Keith. By just putting a little pressure on the trigger, he could blow off Meiju's skull. But not yet. Sun Chi Long would get away. Well, once the two of them are outside the bulletproof limo, then all at once. Damn. Without Alan looking through the binoculars, the scope's field of vision is really narrow. Keith's eyebrows twisted angrily. Hmm. Young Lord, if you would. Meiju politely opened the door and a thin young man got out. Thanks to his assertive GDS-style outfit, you could tell he was a leader at a glance. Hmm. Dressed up like it's a festival. You make a great sniper's target. On the battlefield, if you obviously dress as a superior officer, you make a perfect target for snipers. So on a battlefield, you don't dress up in things that stand out, and your subordinates sometimes don't even salute you. That outfit, which radiated Sun Chi Long's dignity, was extremely convenient for Keith. The car was in the way. If he let them walk a bit further... The end. Is it the street behind that? Ah, uh, what? Who is that? Don't park in a place like this! Everything beyond this point is off limits. Use a different road. These defenses mean nothing. Keith's bullets can hit a target 400 meters away. It's me, Lee Meishu. Out of the way. My brother and the others are in danger. Hey there, meishu son. Sorry, but let us greet each other inside. The ventilation is too good here. <laughs> so we villains can't even shake hands with the sun shines. My apologies. Come, young lord. Is that young lord of yours doing all right? He's been bent over for a while. Is he sick? Don't worry. Come, you should go inside, too. Hmm. Is something the matter? Huh? If this isn't like you. It's rare to see your eyes wander like this, Cyrus-san. Yeah. Uh, just a bug bugging me. This is a new suit! I'm usually pretty rough, but it's strangely annoying today. Hmm. Come, Shilong Dono. Let us go inside. Actually, can, can I... Okay, um... This is actually a bit of a question here concerning, like, uh... I don't know if that's Japanese or Chinese, but I would like to. Can I? I've heard suffixes like sa, san, chan, and stuff like that, but um, dono is something that I don't know the meaning of. I've heard it a couple of times, but um, I'm wondering what like the uh, um, the significance of referring to somebody as dono is, out of curiosity. If you don't, if you don't mind letting me know, I am quite curious. Oh, don't you dare kid. No! <gasps> Brother! Get cover! Meishu! What are you doing here? <laughs> that moment, Shilong's upper body remained in place while just his neck jerked back. Then he crumpled to the asphalt. Damn it! Uh, are you okay, young lord? Uh. Whoa! It's a sniper! Young lord! Look out, Major Son! Hide! Brother! God, just fucking kill her! Get down! So they were attackers after all. <laughs> we thought we saw through them! 
they reached a place where the street was narrower thanks to cars parked on the sides, they suddenly hit the brakes and turned their car sideways, blocking the road. It was a strategy to block the cars, tailing them and cut them off from the main group. However, when the enemy realized they'd been spotted, they bared their fangs immediately. Oh shit, oh shit. That roughness, it's gotta be them. What's the rest of the procession doing? They should be escaping while they hold these guys off. What the hell is that? Formidable looking men were aiming at the procession from second story windows. It proved that this was definitely an ambush, but that wasn't what shocked Oliver and the others. It was the weapons the men were holding. Panzerfaust! It was an anti-tank weapon invented by the German military during the war. Oh! A five kilogram grenade launcher that anyone could use. It was capable of destroying any tank that just at the time of the things. Got... Fucking hell! Jesus Christ, I got grenade launchers? If even a tank couldn't withstand them, there was no way an armored limo could. Smoke erupted from several windows, blowing up one car from the procession after another. The, the concilier's car! This is really bad! At this rate, we'll all be killed! Fool! We can't run away on our own! We've gotta rescue the concilier! You saw that explosion! He's gotta be dead already! Running is not an option until we confirm that! Do you think you can make a report to Aniki Wayne about how you turned tail and ran? Well, do you? The cowards can stay here quivering. The wolves can come with me. Don't let them get near the concilier's car. All right, boys, let's tear them up. Well, I like that pose for him. God, I love, I seriously love the artwork of these battle scenes. They are utterly delightful, to say the least. Except whenever I'm feeling bad about them. Alan and all the men from the GDS were veterans back from the battlefront. When they heard the sound of a sniper, they instinctively jumped behind cover at once. Every one of the massive group of guards was curled up behind cover. Though, through Keith's scope, that single blast of gunfire must have appeared to have erased everyone in the whole area. Only two figures remained. One was Sun Chi Long, sprawled unnaturally on the asphalt, shot through the skull. The meeting is suspended. Get the young lord out of here at once. Yes, boss. What's going on? Hey, look at that. I see. So we both thought the same thing. <clears throat> Shi Long, escape while protecting the young lord. He's already dead. Shilong, I'm sorry, Shaolan and Shilong's guards, who had been hiding behind cover, quickly disappeared into an alley. Surrounded and protected by that group as he retreated, Sun Shilong wearing the same outfit as the guards. Oh my god! Body double! The one shot had been Shilong's body double. <laughs> Fucking great. Okay, he's still alive, thank goodness. One could have easily predicted an enemy attack in a situation like this. It was a natural decision for them to make. That's why he's doubled over. That's Sun Shi Long for you. It seems he won't go down easily. Concilier, it's dangerous here. Retreat! Get in the car at the back of the restaurant! What about Meishu? The guards hadn't been told that Keith would be sniping, so they were in a panic. If they acted too unconcerned, people would probably find it suspicious. Yeah. Have they attacked again? It's dangerous here. Let's scram. You guys, pull out. Yes, boss. We're withdrawing. Tighten the guard around the concilier and the grand boss. Look out for other snipers, too. We're both terrible actors. <laughs> Mishu! Mishu! Meiju's shrill, shrill voice rang out through the quiet street. There were two figures lying on the asphalt. One was Shilong's body double shot through the head. The other was Meishu, shot through the abdomen. 
Meishu, don't try to move. Stay like that. Young Miss, we're coming. Let's go. Carry out the cover. Fools, don't leave cover. Alan was also a sniper, so he knew how foolish it was to show them to yourself when facing off against a sniper. However, three GDS men leapt out of cover to save Meishu. Keith of all people. Damn it! Two of the men who had rushed towards Meishu and tried to lift her up tumbled backwards, and they never moved again. Single trails of blood dribbled down from their foreheads. A single bullet had been accurately shot into each of their foreheads. It was only natural. This distance with no wind, it was as easy for Keith as poking a target with his finger. After witnessing the other two men die right in front of him, the third man's legs gave out. After falling, he tried to crawl back to cover on all fours like a baby. But another merciless shot him, right below the armpit. Are you okay? Hang in there! Get this man to a doctor, quickly! It's no good. It got him in the lung. A small wound and he's still moaning, so it probably looks like he can be saved. But it probably wouldn't happen. Alan had seen many people die like that on the battlefield. But Meishu's case was different. She had been hit in the side of her abdomen. Of course, it was a serious wound, but one very possible to survive if she could be rushed to a hospital. They had a car. The hospital wasn't even that far away. And she was right in front of him. And yet, he couldn't get any closer. Listen to me, Meiju san. Do not leave cover. That's a real sniper who's been shooting. There's no way he'll miss his target. It. It seems so. What terrifying skill. Alan had never met a sniper more talented than Keith. However, his sharpness as a sniper seemed even more honed than usual today. Keith. You lost Stella san and Yuji kun. You probably believed it was the GDS who did it. I can imagine how much hatred you must feel as you hold that gun. Take shallow breaths. I'll definitely save you. So don't lose hope. Of course, attractive women don't die. She had willpower. Her physical strength should probably last a while. Of course, it wouldn't last long. Even so, it was at least a spark of hope in this situation. Most likely, when Meishu suddenly cut in, the scope aiming for Lee Meishu had, was jostled and lost its aim. That was why the sniper had missed, only catching Meishu in the gut while finishing off all the other targets in a single shot. Are there three snipers? They took out the three people who ran out in an instant. To think they had their hands on three snipers of such talent. No, that's wrong. There's only one sniper. That's a cutting-edge Soviet Snope sniper rifle. It holds 10 bullets. On semi-auto, it can hit a target at 600 meters. He's probably brought extra magazines, too. We can't count on him running out or taking time to reload. In older sniper rifles, it had been necessary to use the action to reload after firing each shot. I imagine this would probably have a lot more significance if I was gun smart, but at least I'm learning. Since that required the shooter removing his eye from his target, it caused a significant gap in time. However, that didn't apply for semi-automatic guns. They could fire off bullets one after another. That capability, along with Kate's genius, made for a merciless reaper sickle. You know a lot about it. I guess I should expect no less from the partner of Primavera's greatest sniper. Meiju probably thought this attack had been caused by the same mysterious enemy who had attacked Meishu. That's wrong. It's Keith's gun that did this. Richard. Keith. Their sadness at losing Stella and Yuji had brought them together and demanded an enemy. Stop, Keith! I understand how it feels to lose a loved one. How it feels to want to take revenge. But... 
you're taking revenge against the wrong people! As you just saw, it's used to try and save her by force. But at this rate, Meiji will lose too much blood and die. There's no way to save Yuki-chan directly. Not unless we can do something about that sniper. Wait. Where is he shooting from? It's probably from a roof or a fire escape on a building at the end of the street. At the end of a street? It could be several hundred meters away. For a sniper with military training, that's nothing. <laughs> training aside, he was a descendant of the Matagi, and he received his first lessons as a child. Those genius sniping techniques put to shame all those who had learned how to use guns after joining the military. Hey, Brola! Are you sure the enemy's in the building at the end of the street? Yeah, there's no doubt. There's no other position that good. Okay, you guys. Gather your forces. Take a different route. Head towards that building at the end of the street. If an enemy attacks, the sniper should retreat. Then we'll be able to save the young miss. Please! Understood! Let's go, man! Let's beat down that antisocial sniper! All of you need all you need to do is drive the sniper away. Please hurry! <laughs> Meishu, hang in there. This really sucks. They won't be able to wear a bikini anymore. If you're able to complain like that, you'll be fine. But don't talk. Save your strength. I'll save you no matter what. Then save me quickly. I would do that if I could. But I can't. Even though I'm Alan, Keith's partner, Keith would never pair with anyone but Alan. So right now, Keith must be sniping without a spotter. In other words, he can only see with his scope and his narrow range of vision was naked eye, which could only see indistinct shapes. With Keith's first attack, he should have seen Meiju pushing Meiju out of the way to protect him. He knows she's one of Meiju's relatives, so he must be planning to use her as bait to lure him out. However, this his field of vision was small without a spotter. Right now, Keith's concentration must be terrifyingly intense as he planned to reflexively shoot any figures that approached her. In other words, even if Alan dashed forward, Keith would just instantly shoot him through the head, not realizing that it was him, which is unfortunate. Anyway, the only way to save her would be to chase Keith from his sniping position. Damn it. Boss, they'll have this neighbor chased away soon. After that, we must take the young miss to the hospital immediately. Please. Please. Even Lee Meiju, who was known for being cool and collected, seemed agitated and bit his lower lip, looking as though he was praying. It's his little sister! You can't blame him! He's a big brother who cares for his little sister, and that's why I like Meiju so much! It must break his heart to have his sister lying in front of him, but be unable to rush to her. Keith had noticed that, too. He was probably being patient, focusing his aim on Meiju, and waiting for Meiju to be lured out. However, for a sniper, that means your field of vision is limited, and you become unable to see what's going on around you. If Meiju's subordinates could close in on Keith during that gap... Damn, which building is it? Was it another block down? Still, that's some terrifying skill. Just how far is he shooting from? Ah, should be the first one in when you go down that alley with a sign. Hey, look! Look out! Oh, shit! Damn it! Goddamn, another shootout! Fine, fine! Damn it, they set up an ambush! A sniper whose location has been found out must not be left alone. Elites under Maurice have been hiding in wait in, in front of Keith's building. But that ironically just left them, that just told them right where, they, where he is. They'd even had machine guns positioned in the beds of trucks parked alongside the building. And they prevent this advance with enough firepower for a real war zone. If the GDS wanted to stand up against such an onslaught, they would also need to be armed well enough for a war zone. Normally they would have brought machine guns while protecting the young lord, but this time they had refrained from bringing anything more than handguns to avoid provoking their partners. Damn it! Come on, big guy, let's tear him up! It's 
no use! We can't do anything with handguns! Fool! The young Mrs. Life depends on this! Even if we can't do anything, we will do something! Yeah! Oliver! Fucking Oliver coming in! Or not. But Marie-san even changed our route right before we left. This is obviously a large-scale ambush. That's impossible! It probably means we've got traitors among us. The enemy had taken positions on the second-story buildings on either side. In other words, they had been caught in a pincer attack. There was no way such a trap could be set up unless the enemy had been sure the procession would pass this way. The enemy's initial simultaneous attack had set the procession aflame, and the few guards who survived had been thrown into chaos. Nearly all the guards were young wild dogs. They had no battlefield experience. Gun down like dogs. <laughs> they had experience with people pointing handguns at each other but none of them had been baptized by the flames of explosion while bullets flew about. The few survivors were cowering behind cover, their faces pale. Are you okay? Hang in there. Did the concilier escape? What about the concilier's car? The Oliver! It's no use! It's no use! We're all gonna die! We're all gonna die! Stay with me! Did you- do you call yourself a wolf? Anki Wayne's much, been much closer to the brink of death than this. Now is the time we make a legend. Now is when the alley rats become true wolves. Give it your all and live! Oh, Oliver! The young man peered at Oliver through the gaps in the barricade while my crash attacks. Trucks, looking as though they were going to cry. Even Oliver was scared. He'd never been dragged into a gunfight on this scale. However, wasn't this the sort of big chance he had dreamed of? This was a chance to survive and prove his abilities to sell. What about the concilier's car? Did it explode? It, it didn't! It's the one flipped over by that fire hydrant! Though it had been spared a direct hit by a grenade in the first simultaneous attack, it had lost control and rammed to a fire hydrant. It had turned sideways and rolled over, and its underside was now being doused by the rain from the plume of water spouted from the fire hydrant they hit. Its doors were all still closed, there's no sign that those inside have escaped. We can't even tell if they're okay from here! They've gotta be dead! Let's run away, okay? Cowards can bite their tongues and die on the spot. We are guards selected by Maurice Son. If you get scared and run now, it'll be like splashing mud on Anaki Wayne's face. From this position, they couldn't check to see if the concilia was alive or dead. Probably the same for the enemy. The enemy apparently didn't intend to retreat until they confirmed the concilier's death. In fact, it seemed they didn't plan on leaving anyone alive, the guards included. Listen up. We'll all strike back at once. We'll send bullets up towards all the windows on both sides and make them draw back. We'll use that time to secure the concilier's car and escape. Got that? <laughs> Anaki Wayne would fight. This is your first and last chance to become like him! Let's do it! We gotta do it! We have to do it! You remember what we thought back when we were alley rats? If the only alternatives was living as rats forever and eventually starving to death, then we wanted to live and die as wolves! Even if it only lasted a day! You're right! Today's that day. We will become wolves! We are the wild dogs. Today we train we change from stray dogs to true wolves. Yeah! Rip them apart! Ugh, my blood is boiling!
I think I just broke my hand. Mm -hmm. Yuki-chan, don't try to talk. Meiji-san, don't jump out, no matter what. You're the one they're after. <laughs> Haven't you chased that sniper off yet? The enemy set up an ambush. They're terrifyingly armed and we're no match for them. I'm calling for support now. We need just a bit more time. What? Major son how are they doing? Do they still need more time to chase off the sniper? It was all a trap. They can't even get close to the sniper's building. <laughs> These rough, large-scale methods. There's no doubt. It's the enemy from that day. Do you still suspect the GDS after all this? Now is the precise of the time we must join hands with Primavera and fight together! What happened to Richard's group? They've already escaped! N no one from Primavera is here! So they left us behind. Well, it's not as though they had any obligation to save us. Normally leaving immediately would have been the right decision. But he couldn't abandon Meishu when she was lying on the ground right in front of him. But he couldn't save her either, because that was the sniper's trap. That's right. It was exactly like the time Yuji was shot and Stella was lured out. Do you not see the cruel irony of this, Keith? It must be tough, Lee Meishu. That pain is the pain Stella felt when she wanted to save Yuji-kun, who was suffering in front of her, but couldn't. And Stella was able to dash forward for Yuji-kun's sake, even though she knew she would die. Lee Meiju. That woman's one of your relatives, isn't she? Taste the same sadness Stella felt, and die the same way. Oh, damn it! We are still going here! Holy fuck! Uh, I finally experienced a visual novel final boss battle! Or not a final boss battle, but it's a goddamn boss battle, damn it. Okay, now! By firing on the enemies on both sides of their alleys simultaneously, they could temporarily stop the enemy attack. During that gap, they would head toward the turned over car and rescue the concilier. Oliver, hurry! During that gap, Oliver dashed out from behind cover and dove behind the concilier's rule over cover. However, since the enemies were attacking from both sides, there was nothing actually protecting Oliver now. His allies' cover fire dropped for an instant, and the enemies poked their faces out, he'd be immediately riddled with holes. I felt the terror and helplessness of being a suspended over hell by a single foot of a spider web. Conciliere! Are you okay? Hello! He knocked on the window of the rolled over car, peering in. He could see the conciliere, but neither he nor the guards riding with him responded. They were all lying down and twined inside the upside down car. However, he spotted the conciliere's distinctive clothes at once. Conciliere! I'm going to save you right now! Keep shooting! Keep their heads down till Oliver gets the concilia out of there! I can't- and I, I- I'm- my adrenaline is going through the roof right now that I can't even appreciate the awesome artwork that's being on, put on display right now. Oliver, hurry! We're almost out of bullets! His comrades covered each other while the others were reloading, pinning down the enemy with a superb barrage. The enemy was clearly in a superior position, so they wouldn't open themselves up to risk by shooting back. However, their allies would soon be out of bullets. Oliver's time to save the concilia was almost up. Damn! The door! Open! <sighs> the shock of the crash had apparently removed the door lock, but the door was apparently bent at an angle and didn't open easily. He stuck his hand through a 10 centimeter gap he had managed to create, tried to pull it open by force. <laughs> Oliver! Run of ammo! It's no use! Hide! <clears throat> Almost there. <clears throat> Conciliate! Damn it, all the hell! I swear to God, if you kill Oliver. No 
well matched. They're too heavily armed. <clears throat> they were prepared for war from the beginning. Why aren't the police coming when they're making so much noise? <clears throat> this always happens. Do you think they'd step in to stop the city's maggots from crushing each other? That anti-social sniper's building is right in front of us, damn it! Came to run wild like this without having to worry about the cops. <laughs> Those Chinese bastards can't do a thing! Hasn't Keith finished hunting yet? He's probably still enjoying himself. Time for us to have some fun too! <laughs> Isn't about time we retreated? This'll get troublesome once the reinforcements arrive. I know, but we're in a good spot. Let's hold a firm a bit longer. Maurice removed his binoculars and handed them to the man. From here, they had a view of Meishu lying there, and Meishu watching from behind cover but unable to leave. Sun Shi Lung ran away. Gotta at least crush Li Meishu's balls. Can't hand home man empty handed. We're stuck in a deadlock. Looks like it's gonna take time. The fish are biting. We just need them to get impatient and come out. <laughs> well, I know I can't stay here forever. Then, how about I corner you a bit more? Li Meiju, let's test to see whether your feelings for that woman are as strong as Stella's feelings for Yuji kun <laughs> This is your punishment. As Meiju gradually showed fewer and fewer signs of movement, Meiju's anger and impatience grew. The way he restlessly walked around and scratched his head made him look like someone completely different from the calmly Meiju everyone knew. To someone watching from the sidelines, he may have just looked like someone suffering from impatience. However, only Keith himself and Alan, another sniper, could tell that he was experiencing hellish torture. Meiju san, if you get impatient, it's all over. Believe in her strength to live. <laughs> the pool of blood under Meishu just kept spreading. The more blood she lost, the colder her body got, and the more and more the stamina she needed to live disappeared. Meishu probably couldn't bear the anxiety now that she had fallen completely silent. However, there was no helping it since she needed to store as much energy to live as she could. He probably wanted to confirm that she was still conscious, or at least still breathing. However, if he made her do anything that would let him confirm, it would only torment her now. That moment. There was a strange sharp sound. Something small and white burst and shook. Meishu groaned, and her body shook. Thank goodness she's still breathing, but any relief brought by that thought was blown away when she figured out what the white thing was. What is it, Meishu? Are you okay? What the? Meishu's... It hurts. May she would never be able to engage with me. The ring finger on her left hand has been crushed by a bullet and knocked off. Meiju screamed, writhing about and wailing. Just as Meiju suddenly rose to his feet, the large man behind him held him down. You mustn't! You mustn't jump out! L let go! Mishu, I'm coming now! <laughs> you mustn't! Pass, no! There was probably no helping it. The large man had plunged his fist into the pit of Meiju's stomach. Meiju curled up, holding his side and writhing in pain. Pass, you are Black Dragon Lee! If you die, who will protect our countrymen in City 23? Leave the young miss to us! Hey, you guys, did you find it? This is the best we can do! Great! Perfect! What are you planning to do? It was a large iron barbecue plate, about the size of a tatami mat, which had apparently been fa found in the restaurant. A block! They were also carrying several fire extinguishers. It was clear what they were trying to do. And a dis distraction! 
That's too reckless. You'll never be able to do it. But we're gonna do it anyway. We can't sit here and watch this happen to the young miss any longer. Inside would be one thing, but this is outside. Emptying a fire extinguisher won't make that much of a smoke screen. You're back from the front lines too, right? Do you really think an iron play like that can stop bullets? There's all that distance between us. If we hold it at an angle, it might burst. I can't watch the young miss getting humiliated anymore. A brawler's gotta pick the fight he's gotta pick. Isn't that right, brawler? Okay, we're ready. Okay, we'll run out as soon as we smash open the fire extinguishers. I'll provide cover with the iron plate. While I do that, you guys drag the young miss away. No matter how many of us get shot, don't stop. Got it? Let's show them our Chinese spirit. All of you bastards deserve a name and a medal. I understand how they feel. I can't bear to wait another second either. But it's impossible, insane, reckless. You can't stop Keith sniping with something like that. Stop it! Bear with it, you're just, you'll just die pointlessly! That's right, there's nothing we can do. There's nothing you can do against Sniper's trap. All you can do is abandon them or finish them off mercilessly. If you can't choose either of those, you can only offer up your life and die. Like Stella. You're watching, aren't you, Lee Meiju? If you don't come out quickly, I'll tear that woman to pieces in front of you. Christ! And in this wind? Once again, Reaper's sight known as a bullet descent. Meiju's hand left again. The back of the powerless girl's right hand had been shot right through. Meiju's body shook, but she didn't let out another cry of pain. However, Meiju saw while curled up in a ball. So he moaned in Meiju's place. Meiju! Okay, here we go, man! Break open the fire extinguishers! Stop it! Wait for backup, you'll just die! Stop it! Ah! The men dashed out from behind cover while the fire extinguisher was fiercely pumped out mist. The powder from the fire extinguisher agent formed a cloud around the area. However, it was unclear how effective that was in the middle of the street, with good ventilation. Inside that unreliable smoke screen, the three men jumped out using the fire extinguishers led by the big man holding the iron plate. Immediately, one man was shot through the eye socket and fell down with his fire extinguisher, which rolled around with a clang. <laughs> Aim had been terrifyingly accurate. It chilled Alan's spine to think of the resentful emotions behind the finger pulling that trigger. Don't be afraid! Save the young miss! Die. Crawl around and die in pain. Die while feeling the weight of Stella's, Yuji Kun's, and Alan's suffering. Those bullets of anger and sadness were fired with a yell that would tear the heart of any who heard it. The bullet easily shot through the iron plate and pierced the neck of the man behind it who was trying to grab Meishu's arm. The man, the man should have been covered by the iron plate and therefore out of Keith's line of sight. A talented hunter can predict how an animal will move through the bushes by watching how it moves before entering. Furthermore, he knew exactly where Meishu lay. The screens were useless against Keith's predictive sniping. Once again, the sound of gunfire rang out and the iron plate was easily pierced again. The third man lifted Meishu up by the armpits, but then blood dribbled from a spot between his eyebrows and they both crumpled to the ground. Go to the big man holding the iron plate glared up through the hole in it and yelled. Of course, the 6.62 the 6 7.62 times by 54 54R bullets pierced, fired by guns, Keith gonna have enough power to punch through 10 millimeters of military grade armor, even at a distance of 300 meters. Pulling up a barbecue plate was only a consolation. Of course, the big man had been fully aware of that. Having lost all of his friends, the big man threw the iron plate and dashed towards Meishu. A cool bullet pierced his back.
could let something like this kill me. <coughs> While the big man coughed up blood, he mustered the last of his strength and picked Meishu up. Feel this, Chinese. Feel everyone's pain and die. Yuji shot, lying on the footpath and died. And Stella in anguish because she couldn't run forward and help him. I couldn't do anything but watch with my finger in my mouth. Stella jumped out believing that I would surely be able to do something. But it was impossible. Even I couldn't do anything in a situation like that. No one could have done anything in that situation. Yeah, are you happy? You're now the same person that you took away that took away Stella! It was a death trap. The reason I couldn't save Stella wasn't because I was powerless. I'm a genius! Even I couldn't do anything about that death trap. No one could! So feel that, suffer, and die! Stop! It was a stroke of luck that the shock of rolling over had undone the car lock, the door lock. Or rather, it wasn't really a stroke of luck, but Oliver had no way of knowing that. <laughs> Something broke loose and the car door opened. Concilier! Damn, he's not conscious! He couldn't tell at a glance if he was unconscious or dead. However, there were no obvious wounds, and there was no time to waste checking his pulse. Right now, their highest priority was moving him to a safe place. He grabbed him by the shoulders, pulling his arms behind his back and dragging him out. <clears throat> All of us, no good! Run! They're gonna start shooting! Damn it! <clears throat> Apparently he was tangled up with the guards in the car. Oliver couldn't pull the concilier's leg free. Damn it, damn it, damn it, damn it, damn it! Didn't this all the hell? We got no bullets left. We gotta run. Help me out. It's time to take one last shot, right? Let's show Anaki Wayne that we can create a legend. We aren't alley rats anymore. We're adult wolves, so we can never run away. Let's go. Help Oliver. Ah, get out of this. Literally everything bad is going on right now. Literally every fucking thing that's going on. Possibly go wrong is going awful. The young wild dogs jump from behind cover to help Oliver. They pulled the concilier's body out of the crack of the door. Even while they were dragging him out of the car, they got hit by bullets one after another. Bullets fired by other members of Primavera. Perhaps their only relief was that they died without knowing the truth. Gil! Were you shot? Don't worry about me! Get the concilier somewhere safe! Fool, what are you trying to do? Get out of here quickly! You said it yourself. <laughs> Could we really tell Anaki Wayne that we done tail and ran? Even I want Anaki to see me doing something cool! You fool! Run! Come on, you scum! Become the foundation for my legend! God damn it, Gilly, you magnificent son of a bitch! Fuck you! Gil! Yeah. Damn it. Damn it. When the concilier wakes up, tell him I offered my body up, uh, my body to protect him. Damn it, Gil. <sighs> he blocked many bullets with his body. He stopped the bullets that would have hit Oliver and the concilier. Beyond his body as he crumpled were piles of their comrades who were already on the ground. Clark, who had gone around swiping bread with him. 
Donnie, who had fought with him over rotting apple cores. Andy, who had become a reliable friend ever since he decided he had misjudged Oliver. They were all hit by bullets, shot by who knew who, and they died without a chance for any last words. Like the corpses of rats that had fallen off piles of alley trash to be crushed in truck tire ruts. Oliver howled. It wasn't out of fear of death. He didn't want to believe it. He was a wolf. A human. He flashed back to his memories of a time when he'd rather do anything than die like a rat. Those scornful gazes directed at the miserable orphans. The cold. He had wrapped himself in a ragged sheet he had stolen from a construction site, gazing at the warm light peeking through window curtains. The coldness of his frozen hands that day made Oliver howl. And then, Oliver prepared himself. He prepared himself for death. He was afraid. Afraid that this death might be like the rats crushed in ruts. Instead of dragging the consulé by the hands, Oliver dragged him so that his body covered him. There was no one left to block the bullets heading towards them. He had to protect the consulé with his own back. And it worked. Because his back caught several bullets that would have otherwise have hit the consulé. I mustn't fall here. I must keep bearing it. Standing it. Just get the concilier. I cover. Oliver was tormented by several more bullets. Several even pierced his lungs. Oliver was prepared for death. So at the very least, he didn't want to die in vain. No matter what, he didn't want to die like a crushed rat. A meaningful death. A proud death like a wolf. A death that would make Anaki say you did well! <laughs> he finally dragged the concilia behind cover. Yes, it was victory. He could hear police sirens in the distance. The enemy would probably pull out now. I won. I won. He coughed up bubbles of blood. As they landed on the concilier's brow, it moved. Thank goodness. You're alive. Huh? He hadn't noticed when the man was unconscious, but he could tell clearly when his expression changed and his eyes opened. The clothes and look of his face were very similar, but long. This wasn't the concilier. <laughs> wasn't Richard Mahogany. It was a fake. Who is he? <laughs> so, we threw away our lives. You're some random person we don't even know. That's right. You never rely on us, alley rats. Guard the concilier. No. Not a rat. Okay, kill Richard, kill Richard now, kill Richard now. Stop, just stop. In the back of Meishu's other hand was shot through. Fissures ran through something in Meishu's heart and it crumbled. It was the same for Alan. Because Meishu's body no longer shook from the bullets. Normally you would cry. You would cover your face with tears, mourning your powerlessness. But Alan's face, 
or only wore a stiff smile as though someone had told a bad joke. He hated himself for being like that. He truly despised himself for being unable to cry when you have to cry. He hated that the death of the woman he loved so much seemed almost the same as the death of all those comrades he'd seen. That feeling of disgust towards himself was probably closer to rage than sadness. However, that feeling was shaken away in an instant. Shaken away because he saw Meiju weakly trying to rise to his feet, his face covered in tears. Meiju, I'm coming to save you now. Swaying his hand on the wall, he was trying to stand up. Believing his sister was still alive, he was trying to save her. He couldn't accept the reality in front of him. No. He still believed she was alive because of love. And I... I don't even have that. I'm losing the person I love right in front of me. And this is... The expression on my face. That's... Something that dried up long ago on the parched battlefield. That big man had probably only stopped Black Dragon Lee by hitting him with a serious strike. While Meiju moaned in pain, he rose to his feet like a newborn. By now, he wasn't even thinking about his own life. He simply wanted to get closer to his sister who lay there wounded. It was a natural emotion for a human. I'm doing. Hiding here. Quietly waiting for support may be correct, but it's just cold and unnatural. The war has already killed my heart. He who still suffered from trauma suffered because his heart was still alive. Since my heart's already dead, even Yuki-chan's death is... somehow... far away. But when I see Meiju-san's tear-stained face, it aches. That's right. My heart did die once. However, that woman named Lee Meishu brought it back to life, didn't she? Yuki is dead. Saying that had nothing to do with having a heart or not. It was just a cold analysis done by someone who'd seen hundreds of deaths on the battlefield. However, the heart that loved her, my heart, the one she revived, are not dead. A future world where we surpass boundaries of Japanese and Chinese and join hands like family. That was her ideal, wasn't it? At that moment with the drift, I definitely felt something hot slide down my cheek. A faint emotion remaining inside me. Then when I looked at Meiju offering up his life and trying to get closer to her, his face a mess of tears I saw myself. Meiju saw me. You mustn't go. His voice was unbelievably calm. It was as though he was talking to Yuki, as though he was talking to family. To Alan, Meiju wasn't just some person anymore. He was a man who loved Yuki as much as Alan did, and he was even family now. Then he clearly heard Yuki's voice. How long are you men going to keep warring? And that war of yours quickly. cannot sit quiet and watch this anymore. <laughs> if you die, we'll put an end to our war. At this rate, hatred will summon hatred, and another war will start. <laughs> We've lost sight of who our enemies are. We just hate whoever's nearby, trying to escape from the flames of hatred. Yes, it's like Keith right I don't know what's about to happen in this city, but one thing I do know is that we must not start a war. There's no way she'd want that. <laughs> Alan's quiet tone may have helped Meiju's heart regain a little of its composure. 
Meiju fell to his knees again, hanging his head and sobbing. He said, This is all the plot of someone trying to get us to fight. And right now, you're the only one who can stop it. Are you... Are you telling me that after being treated like this, I have to live and swallow my hatred without being able to let it fly? His little sister had been humiliated and killed right in front of him. Was he supposed to swallow his desire for revenge against such an act? By now, Meiji was starting to guess the true nature of this attack. Liv, I can still see Yuki behind your face. So, please. Oh, selfish. Do you have the right to order me to abandon my revenge? Can you understand the pain I feel at losing my only... the last remaining part of my family? I do understand. I know that your feelings won't go away. So, let's do this. In your place, I'll save yuki -chan. <laughs> Even Meiju knew. Keith was now in a state of ultimate concentration. He would instantly and accurately shoot anyone who approached Meishu, no matter who it was. Even if it was his own partner, he would pull the trigger long before noticing who it was. Even Alan would die if he went out. What would be the point? I'll prove it. Prove what? I'll prove to you that I can die for her. Alan Cole. So, use this to quell your anger. Please believe that there is a man who will feel as much pain at her death as you do. I... I wanted to welcome you as a member of my family. No. She and I... were already joined. You and I... are family already. So... you aren't alone. I... not... Alone. Alan slowly stood up and poked his face out from behind cover. The instant he sensed killing intent and moved his face, the wall where his face had been a moment ago was gouged by a bullet. No matter what showed itself, it would be shot instantly. Apparently his naive hopes that appearing slowly would make the shooter notice the difference in tone and hesitate were mistaken. Alan Cole. There's apparently six billion people in the world. Out of all of them, I met the one and only yuki -chan. If that isn't a miracle, I don't know what is. Which means I'm one in six billion winner. A super lucky boy. Don't worry. The bullet will miss miraculously. That's enough. Your resolve has cleared my mind. No. It's not. Men and women need to take vows to become family. It's the same between men. That's what this is. For us. Stop. Whew. Stop it. Here I go. You'll die in vain. Do you intend to make me lose my family again? Give me one more miracle, as big as the miracle of meeting Yuki-chan. <laughs> Alan rolled out from behind cover. However, Keith's merciless sights pointed squarely at Alan's brow. A miracle? With Keith's perfect sniping techniques, a miraculous miss was impossible. However... A single white feather danced. Just a single white feather that drifted out of nowhere. A boorish bullet, which he could easily shoot through metal plates, merely had a feather 
drifting in the wind. However, that bullet missed the place Keith was aiming for by a few centimeters. Alan, who had fallen down as though covering Meishu, slowly got up. On the skin of his forehead was a wound like one made by a sharp razor, marking the place where the Reaper's blade had fallen. Then, as though it had only just remembered, a line of blood dripping dripped from that sharp, thin wound. Alan? As the, at the far opposite end of that scope, Alan stared into Keith's eyes. Keith felt no happiness at seeing his partner alive. After all, Alan's gaze seemed to be pitying. Whatever it was that gaze was saying, Keith was stunned, and it felt as though his mind was going blank. Uh, it, it's not like that, Alan. This is revenge. I, I wasn't... What does Alan think he's doing? Th that bastard! Alan slowly lifted up Meishu's body from out of nowhere. A white, slightly charred feather landed on that body. Then after a glance at Keith in the distance, he slowly carried that body. He carried the body of the one he loved. Carefully. With the gentleness of absolute affection. What's that fool doing? That's Lee Meiju's bait! <laughs> Keith, don't let him stop you! Shoot at the fool's legs! Alan? Keith! Keith's face was pale, because he realized that the one he had shot and humiliated was the person Alan loved. However, he suddenly flew into a rage, muttering as though making excuses. To Maurice, it must have looked as though Keith had simply gone insane all of a sudden. Keith! What on that's gotten into you? Shut up! I didn't do anything wrong! I did nothing wrong! Lee made you killed Stella! I, I couldn't finish him off because that woman protected him. She's just as guilty. So, uh, I did nothing wrong. Nothing wrong. <laughs> Keith's roar had echoed across the street, but it faded away cruelly. Alan carried Meishu's body to the cover where Meishu was. There was now no way they'd get a chance to snipe Meiju. Damn that bastard! Messing around! <clears throat> Boss, we should pull back now. The sirens are approaching. Damn it! Keith, we're pulling out! Alan betrayed us! He took Lei Meiju's side! Alan betrayed us? See that Yuki-chan was part of Lee Meiju's family. I see, that explains it. Alan betrayed us. <laughs> he, he betrayed us. That explains everything. I did nothing wrong. Nothing. I didn't do anything wrong. I want you to praise Yuki-chan. <laughs> My little sister did an incredible job enduring such pain. <laughs> A gust of wind blew by. It sent that white feather, which was resting on Meishu's chest, flying. And after dancing through the valley between buildings, it disappeared into the blue sky, as if it had been sunk in. 